girly goings on in the US Army over on ITV2 now. Can a young widow leave life's luxuries behind and brave the elements? Goldie Horn is Private Benjamin. Here on Time Tees, it's time for this Saturday's guest to brave Brian Connolly. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, party time, so I think we ought to hit it. Yeah. Phil, if you're going to do it, do it properly. This is a nice little learner for you. Oh. It's party time. <laughs> hit it! <laughs> She's been home and away, but now she's on a farm. It's Emmerdale's Emily Simon. <laughs> there are six stars on the Australian flag tonight. There's seven. Natalie Imbruglia. <laughs> From talking telephone numbers to talking to animals, Mr. Philip Schofield. <laughs> and he's a Spanish singer who sets hearts aflutter. Yes, girls. Enrique! Research this week revealed that paint contains chemicals that can reduce your fertility. <laughs> yes, but I know how you can sort that out. Just get a little stripper. <laughs> and now the other part. Good news now taught us that lost its leg has had it replaced with a little rubber wheel. Aww. Yes, the vet said the operation was a success, but the tortoise was a little tired. <laughs> Also this week, Mark Fowler has been sacked, ladies and gentlemen, from EastEnders. He's been there so long, he has been there so long, he's become part of the furniture, wooden. <laughs> Mind you, he is putting on a brave face, uh, because that's the only face he could do. <laughs> and this is my favourite. Finally, scientists this week have invented the contraceptive for dogs. <laughs> so now, they can bury as many bones as they like. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the show. Steve Brown in the band! Oh, that's enough. So, Steve, what have you been up to this week? Well, as you can see, Brian, I I've been working out this week. Yes, yeah, so have I. I've been trying to work out why you're still on this show. <laughs> Sex appeal, Brian. Sex appeal. Oh, really? <laughs> you, you may laugh. I wish somebody would. <laughs> He's had living now, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I'll get back to that. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, but I'll tell you what, in three weeks' time, I'm going to have the body of a sportsman. Yes, you yes. are. Yes, Jockey Wilson. <laughs> Steve Brown and the Ad Living Band. Now, proving that you can be glamorous down at the farm, it's Emmerdale's barmaid, Emily Simons. Darling. How I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. Are you nervous? Yeah, I'm really nervous. I thought I was going to fall down the stairs. <laughs> now, you are. You're Australian? Yes. Yes, of course. That's correct. So I've got your drink here. Here oh. in England, you've got a uh, pomade. There you go. Thank you. Over there. Of course, being Australian, all of us these love a Barbie. <laughs> Thanks. I'll put that down there. I'll put that there in case I'm Okay. Now, in Ebido, you play the part of an Australian that works behind a bar. Yeah, Louise Appleton uh -huh. is my character's name. Yes. I'm very good at pulling pints now, I have to tell you. 
Oh? Yeah, it's quite, you know, there's an arch. Is there really? Yeah. Now, let me tell you, now, being a barmaid, yeah. you know, I thought I'd uh, impress you now with some of the cocktails that I personally have invented because you're specifically on the show really? tonight. Really? Yes. So here we go, first up, Kylie Minogue, that there. Very tasty at the bottom. Oh. The uh, Martini McCutcheon. Yes, one of these, and you'll be off work for weeks. <laughs> and uh, one of my favourites, the Argentinian football cocktail. Huh? No, after the first round, you're totally out of it. <laughs> Finally. I've got the Angus Dayton. There it is. No, this is mainly Coke. <laughs> when you... You get very nervous about this, aren't you? Yeah, I'm really... What's he going to do? Gerard, I can't... My feet don't touch the floor. Oh, look. Like, yeah. It's a giant chair. It's a giant chair for you. Oh, no. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, so... <laughs> you can't... Champagne, yeah. <clears throat> no, carry no on it's just that when you got the audition for Home and Away, yeah. you really got into the part, am I, am I right? Well, I mean, you, the, the character description was that she was a bit, you know, a bit, bit tarty. Mm -hmm. um, so I went along dressed, you know, as a tart. And it was... The, so what was you wearing? Well, I just had on this, like, really, like, slapperish white dress, tight. And get a sure. mental picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the audition was held in King's Cross, which is this area of Sydney, which is where all the... And Ladies so, of horizontal and, refreshment. Um, <laughs> so my mum drove me dressed as a... And I had to, like, get out of the car and walk through this... You know, like, there was a drunk lying in the doorway. I had to step over him to get into the audition facility. You know, so and did you make a like, few quid? No! <laughs> No, he was asleep. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so but when I got up there, there was this room, you know, the room where all the other actresses who were going for the part of Marilyn, it just looked like, you know, prostitutes everywhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, one of the first scenes of Broadway to England was Panto. Was that a culture shock for you? Yes, it was. Because so, we don't have it in Australia, so it's not a childhood tradition. Uh -huh. So the first time I, um, I went to see one, I was like, oh my God, everyone is yelling out. And it's so embarrassing, shh, you know, because, uh, you know, when you go to the theatre in Australia, you're, not, you're told to not speak, you know, right. you're not allowed to shout. So I couldn't believe it. I thought it was really... Well, fabulous. a couple of your early relationships uh, happened in pantomime. Yes, yeah. they did, yes. Yeah. But now they're behind you? They are, yes. <laughs> now, I used to really enjoy this. The winners of that, that programme, the TV soap stars, yes. you know, and they won these parts in yes. Emma Hell. What did you think about that? Yeah, I didn't have a problem with it. I'm actually doing uh, a movie, the Brian Connolly story, and uh, I personally cannot afford real actors, so... Uh, <laughs> no, I did. I, I had a competition, went out onto the streets to find some mm. film stars of the future. Let the auditions begin. <laughs> Action! It's Saturday night and it's party time. Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. I'll fill it up, kind of fantastic. <laughs> it's Saturday night in Turkish. Jumati tonight. Jumati tonight. Do you think you could play like my great great grand? No, I don't think so. It's a puppy. Is it cold in the ground this morning? No. Okay. It's a puppy. Got to be my it's a puppy. I know, but I'm not as good as you. It's a puppy. <laughs> and again, one more time. You could be my stunt double. Yeah. Do you think so? It's a puppy. Oh, my Ah, yes. Thank you. The Brian Connolly story. I think it's going to be very short. That's a wrap. Um, and when you was a kid, uh, you, you used to... Well, you used to play the... Uh, the the flutes. The flutes. Yeah. Well, I played the... You haven't got a flute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but what is the trick to play the flute, then? Um, you've got to breathe a kuo. Sorry. Kuo? <laughs> a a kuo? I thought injury. you have got to breathe a koala or you've something. Got to breathe <laughs> a, you've got to breathe across the hole. Oh, right. So, I suppose it would be a bit like blowing into a bottle. Yeah, it is, a little bit. Good. Because <laughs> we thought maybe you could play the bottle for us. 
<laughs> okay, that's great. So we'll do that now. I've had it soon, and uh, I thought you could accompany me now as I sing one of my favourite songs. So okay. when I point to you, you play it. Right, okay. Good night, okay. Here we go. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Sometimes I feel I've got to run away. I've got to get away from the pain that you drive into my heart for me. Now you, I have to ask, because you and Natalie and Brulee are two of Australia's most famous exports. Oh, very kind yeah. of you. She's fabulous. But I've heard you do an impression of one of the most famous of all. <laughs> These might help you. <laughs> now, good luck, Emily. <laughs> it's not Elton John, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Elton John. <laughs> I know what I said. <laughs> okay. Now. No, no, in the car park. <laughs> oh, on, a, on a television show. You have to be spontaneous. What? Ready? Mm -hmm. Hello, Papa! Emily, how do you relax when you're not working? Well, I love cooking. Mm -hmm. I just adore cooking, and um, I would just love to invite loads of people around and cook for them. Do you specialise in Australian cuisines? <laughs> I don't know, that's not my specialty, I do everything. But they do eat some weird things, don't they? You've got kangaroo burgers in Australia, or, Yeah. Uh, you mm. know, crocodile, yeah. emu. Yeah. Emu, I've never eaten an emu. Now, in the outback, of course, when you're really peckish, they like to chomp on these. Oh, Oof. no! Oh, please don't! Oh, well, that is fine. No, that's alive! That's it could be, there it is. There. Oh, no. <laughs> been bugging me all day. It was tasty, but not as tasty as you. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you, Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, Emily Simon! <laughs> right, coming out, we've got Natalie and Rulia, Phillips Goldfield, and Enrique! Just one ninety nine at Quick Save. That can't be true. Quick Save, making our drama out of our prices. He talks to you in a language only you understand. The language of Winnerlot Vitality Plus, a blend of nutrients that goes beyond health. To a lively attitude. Win a lot, Vitality Plus, a language you both understand. 
Hello. Have you tried Campino? Sweet. Thank you. Hey, I know them. They're delicious. Mm, unbelievable. Tastes like strawberries and cream. Yeah, like ice cream. They're really creamy. Campino. The real taste of strawberries and cream in a sweet. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't tasted it. It's huge. It's the great TCAS Midsummer Sale. Whirlpool Bars from only £399.99. Corner Bar Shell Suite only £299.99. And this roll-top freestanding bar suite is now only £699.99. Save up to 40% off Symphony Kitchens. And if you spend £1,999 on a second nature rigid kitchen, we'll give you the new PyroClean in the set oven with Hob absolutely free. It's huge. It's the Midsummer Sale at TCAS in Ryup, Stockton and North Shields. 20 summer cruising classics on one fantastic CD. Free inside tomorrow's Mail on Sunday. Keep on running. Keep With 15 on top 10 hits, including five number ones. I sound like cricket, oh no. I love it. Get your fabulous 20 track CD, coast to coast, free inside every copy of tomorrow's Mail on Sunday. With air conditioning, the Nissan Almira from £9,995 with extended 0% finance. Professor Adonis Canute has money. I have an enormous stipend. Gigantic, sir. Sex appeal. And a mad butler. What more could he want? Peerage, knighthood, Ulrika Johnson. Rick Mail stars in Believe Nothing. Next Sunday at 5 past 10 on ITV1. Welcome back. Now, this weekend sees the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. It's that time of year when our leading Playboy drivers like to burn some rubber. Yes. Then they leave their girlfriends in the trailer and start the race. <laughs> So, let's meet now our man with his eye on the chequered flag. It's Britain's most promising new driver, Jackie Hillstar. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry, I'm late. I had trouble parking the car. <laughs> uh, now, Jackie, uh, judging by your suit, it's obvious you have a, a number of sponsors. Yes, I've got, as you can see, anodine on my head, bits on my chest, right guard, left guard, and anus sole. <laughs> hey, I won't be showing you that one. <laughs> Uh, Jackie, do your sponsors get value for money? Oh, of course, yes. I'm not like that Michael Shushuma, my Michael. Yeah, because there's two egos, vroom, and then he's gone. And the speed I go, everyone gets to read my stickers. <laughs> uh, now, in your last race, I believe you had a nasty accident. Yes, there were skid marks everywhere. I was really nervous. Well, Michael Schumacher's pit crew, he could change his tyres in 6.3 seconds. How long did it take uh, you, Jackie? Um, an hour and three quarters. <laughs> you see, the boys, they are very meticulous. They like to change the tyres, balance out the wheels. Then there's all that singing and dancing. Oh, we can't walk, man, in a quick move here. We need to buy two tyres. Ha, ha! Good luck in the race, Jackie Hillstar. <laughs> She's my favourite neighbour. As far as I'm concerned, she can play her music as loud as she wants. Natalie Imbruglia! Really? Yes, we've got a little Australian theme here, haven't we? We have. First two guests. Now, um, you do like a glass of bubbly. I do. But what the hell? Oh, I like this chair. Do you? Can I sit like that? You can have the whole bottle. No. <laughs> <laughs> bubbly. You can sit like that if you want, Nelly. Should I? Yeah, why not? Okay. It's my little casting couch there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I walked straight into that one. Uh, now, we all knew you as Beth in the yes. gritty drama Neighbours. Do you miss it? No, I don't. No? I'm going to face you. I don't yeah. miss it. I don't miss it. Oh, I had a great time, though. Yeah? I had a great How time. How long was you in it for? Uh, two years. So what made you leave? Well, I got married on the show. So after you get married on the soap, it's kind of... It's Down kind there. Of, it's it's well... like that in real life, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I actually watch Neighbours. Uh, not on the telly with these. <laughs> 
clearly. Um, you are a, a very successful recording artist. I mean, was it difficult to make that transition into the pop world? From soap it stuff? was. Yeah? It was. I tried a couple of times. When I was 14, I went for a record deal. And everyone was trying to make me do dance music and things that I didn't want to do. So, so I put it off for a very long time. And then when the time was right and I got the courage up, I... And I also ran out of money. I went through a bit of a rough patch in London and started songwriting and... So, do you think you were inspired by uh, Kylie? Definitely. I grew up watching Kylie on uh -huh. Neighbours, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm a big fan. But for every Kylie, there is a Stefan Dennis. You know? <laughs> no. Or as we say in England, Sid Owen. <laughs> so, was you uh, surprised with the success of uh, the song Torn? Very. Really? Very. Uh -huh. I, I think I was so prepared for people to give me a hard time because I'd crossed over from acting that I hadn't really prepared myself that it might do well. Mm -hmm. So when it did, I was like, oh, okay, they like it. And, and then I had fun. You got a new single out? Yes. Mm -hmm. Beauty on the Fire. Great video. We're going to see a bit of that. In a yeah, I actually had to swim in these 20 feet deep tanks in the Bahamas which was uh, lucky I could swim actually. I had jeans on and I had to swim down in these tanks and swimming underwater without puffing your cheeks out and trying to look reasonably normal is quite difficult. But it was a fun, fun video to make. Mm. Yeah. So how long can you hold your breath for? I, I don't know, but it was quite a while. I can actually hold my breath for five minutes and uh, that's the reason my wife married me. But, um... <laughs> Let's have a little look at a clip, not my wife, of the video. Here we go. <laughs> They were going to put me in with the sharks. No. And I chickened out at the last minute. Well, I think I would. So they put they, they kind of got the sharks out of one section of the tank and then I got in. But all the other fish were there. Uh -huh. in the manta ray. But it was four years since your last album. Yes. Yeah? Why was that? It just took a long time. I took a year off, which I felt I needed at the time. But anyone who's done one record, don't take, don't take a year off. Just go straight in there. And then I started songwriting and it was just hard getting back into it and the pressure and I wrote 64 songs the first year and didn't like any of them and writer's block I did get writer's block a yeah. lot and you have to write through it I mean you have to just get up and go to work and it's, it took a lot of discipline when you know you're finding it really difficult to just you know keep slogging it out well we want to make it easier for you with regards to your writer's block okay. so uh, me and Steve have decided to write a pop classic, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right now for your... <laughs> but, of course, we've got to make it personal to you, so um, a few questions, OK? Need your help. So here we go. Uh, what's your favourite of your five senses? Touch. Touch. OK. Uh, what would you say is the best part of your body? <laughs> My eyes. Your eyes. Hat. You've got a lovely pair of eyes. <laughs> what activity? I'm really getting nervous now. No, it's fine. This is our song. Don't you worry. Okay. What activity would you like to try that you've never done? Um, jumping out of an aeroplane. Uh, skydiving, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favourite... What's your favourite food? Um... I like Japanese food, sushi. Sushi. And ice cream. And? Not, not together. No. <laughs> and your favourite colour? Electric blue. Now, Steve and I are going to weave these facts seamlessly into a modern pop classic. Okay. For you. So I'll tell you what we've got. We've got touch, we've got eyes, we've got skydiving, uh, sushi, ice cream, electric blue. When I 
touch your eyes, I feel so glad. You make me feel I want to skydive. When I eat sushi and ice cream, I think of you. So stay with me. Don't make me feel electric blue. Cause I'm nuts over you just like a cashew. Big finish with I. You feel electric blue. I thought that was quite cool. Well, you told me that. I did, didn't I? <laughs> see, I'm writing it all the time. <laughs> I can see you do one. <laughs> so you live over here now? Mm-hmm. Whereabouts? Windsor. Yeah? What's the address? I just want to... <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you, uh, you live on an island. Yeah. That's very romantic, isn't it? Mm. Well, this got me thinking, you know. Because we were thinking there must be lots of other celebrities that could live on islands. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, you could have uh, Jeremy Clarkson. I mean, where do you think he could live? He could live on Rhodes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Michael Jackson, he could live on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> George Michael, the Isle of Man. <laughs> Is my favourite, my favourite, my favourite, Gaza, Hawaii. <laughs> Finally, we could have Jay from Big Brother, Isle of Dogs. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you've got quite an interesting way of getting relaxed when you do a photo shoot. Um, basically, when you're doing photo shoots and it's been a long day, and you have to look really natural and spontaneous, and they want you kind of laughing and smiling, and after a few hours of smiling, it gets a bit hard. So. Sometimes I get my makeup artist to sit, stand behind the photographer and flash, or at least <laughs> pretend to, and it makes me laugh and then we get natural pictures. Why, are they funny? <laughs> <laughs> I think you've probably been gutted now. <laughs> I, think it's, I, I think it's just the naughtiness of it, really. You're very petite. Are you the smallest member of your family? I'm not. My, I'm taller than my mum and my dad. Oh, that's <laughs> of the yellow brick road. <laughs> <laughs> you. No. Um, short. Five, uh, three, I think. Uh, we've actually uh, traced your family tree. Oh, no. Yeah, there it is. Oh. <laughs> bonsai. My dad used to own a nursery. He used to pot bonsai. Ah, oh, well, you can have that. It's a little memento. Oh, thank you. What is he, the I lumberjack? Like <laughs> But you got your first break uh, doing an advert? Yes, mm. I did, for Japan. It was a bubblegum commercial. Uh. And I didn't have to say anything. I, I wore this pineapple coloured dress, because that was the flavour of the bubblegum, and I literally had five pieces of bubblegum, and I was just chewing and chewing and blowing bubbles and waving, and, and I was a pineapple princess. Oh. <laughs> That's where it all started. I know, because I saw it earlier on. You've got it? Yeah. Oh, yeah! Oh, it's this. Ladies and gentlemen, naturally, in a, <laughs> as a bubblegum princess, Pineapple. Pineapple and Pineapple Stay with us because after the break it's Enrique and Philip Schofield. It's hot. It's seriously hot. So don't miss the summer sale at Conroy's for serious savings. Like the Georgia at £399. That's half price. Choose the Rome. Down to half price at £499. Relax on the Monique double recliner at only £999. And that's half price too. Or stretch out on the Chertsey. Yours at half price for just £599. The summer sale at Conroy's. It's seriously hot. 
20 summer cruising classics on one fantastic CD. Free inside tomorrow's Mail on Sunday. Keep on running. With 15 top 10 hits, including five number ones. Get your fabulous 20-track CD, Coast to Coast, free, inside every copy of tomorrow's Mail on Sunday. Hyundai's range demands a closer look. The Accent, a car to drive with confidence. You'll love the four-wheel drive Santa Fe, great versatility and uncompromising style and space. The Matrix, a flexible five-seater for you and your family. And of course, the stunning Coupe, a thoroughbred sports car. To arrange a test drive, call your Hyundai dealer or phone 0800-981-981. Ooh, Venus from Gillette has three blades with refills that are individually sealed and easy to change. They're where you need them, when you need them, so you get the closest shade and smoothness that every goddess deserves. Venus from Gillette. Now indulge yourself with new Satin Care Shave Gel from Gillette. At B&Q, we're making room for our new kitchen. That means incredible clearance savings. There's at least a third off selected kitchens. All these Rockford units are just over £1,300. Our experts can come round to your home and help you plan it for free. We can fit it for you too if you want. And if you choose the Brockenhurst kitchen, you can now get the units at half price. All these units for under £700. Kitchen clearance at B&Q. Don't miss out. You can do it when you're being q it. Burn love. Try these. Did you know that Gaviscon tablets work in a similar way to Gaviscon liquid? They soothe and cool to help put out the fire of heartburn and indigestion. They may surprise you. Gaviscon tablets. See what they'll do for you. And the urban space and baby. them up against allergies, but you can treat almost every allergic reaction with Puritan. Puritan, for the family's allergies. With so many frames at half price in the Boots Optician sale, it's the perfect time to treat yourself to a new look. Now available at Boots Opticians. He's a Spaniard with an armada of fans, Enrique! Yes, I know you love me. <laughs> so you didn't bring any fans in. <laughs> there you go, mate, it's a sangria. <laughs> now, you have sold a stack of 25 million albums in 32 countries. That is incredible. It's going well, especially with this album, you know. Uh, I I've been lucky, you know. I put a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of love into my music, and it's paid off. Mm. Yeah. So why do you think you're so popular? <laughs> uh, well, I think I'm so... All right, girls, I know you love me. Cool it. <laughs> uh, I was going to say something real stupid. I think, uh... uh <laughs> oh, no, I say the stupid things. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know, you know. I guess because there's people out there with no taste? No. No, no. Um, it's nothing to do with your smouldering good looks. Uh, you know what? I told you, I think it all comes down to the music. You know, when you have a song that people love, you know, it touches people's, uh, people's hearts and then people go out and buy it. I, uh, you know, I, 
I'm not gay. Yeah. Even I want to kiss you. <laughs> now, I believe uh, we're going to talk about female fans now, because when you went to Argentina, you had quite a, a warm welcome. Oh, Argentinian fans are crazy. But in Europe, it can get pretty crazy too, yeah. you know? Um, it just gets nuts. Sometimes you're in a concert and you'll see a fan naked running through the crowd. And you completely, you know, you lose concentration. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> I was, where was it, in Holland uh, a few months ago? I was doing a concert and there was this girl completely taking her top off the whole time. And it comes a point that you try to, you make it seem like you're not watching or staring and you're like, and little by little you start staring. <laughs> the whole one, but like the drummer will catch her attention, you know, everybody starts looking and after a while you're like, everyone's like looking at the girl and just playing for the next hour. <laughs> I think people don't like that. Happy memories. Yes. Happy memories. Happy memories. You have been uh, linked to uh, a lot of attractive women. Is there anyone special in your life? Um, n not, not really. I'm, I'm not dating. And of course, there were rumors about you and Anna Kornikova. Yeah, just rumors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish so. these rumors were true. Well, you didn't take advantage of her. I didn't take advantage. <laughs> You are very fond of your dog, son. I love my dogs. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you got then? I got a golden retriever and a German shepherd. Mm -hmm. Do you sleep with the retriever? I do sleep with the I mean he sleeps in my uh, yeah. uh, on my room. I don't sleep with the retriever. So you're not worried that when maybe you might be counting sheep, he could be rounding them up. You don't know that. Do you? That's right. I actually insist uh, my dog comes to the bedroom. Uh, then I'm not the only one begging. <laughs> You're known for your toned body. How do you keep in shape? <laughs> this is a serious question here. I'm sorry, it, it, the kind of embarrassing questions. A toned body? What do you, I got the biggest chicken legs in the world. I mean, I have no, there's no tone, tone in my body. There's, I mean, I'm just skinny. I'm just a stick. You know? But you I do mean, much sport? I, I used to play uh, football when I was younger, mm -hmm. but I had chicken legs, so I knew I wasn't going to get far. It was pretty embarrassing. It was embarrassing in high school. Whenever I had to put on shorts, it was pretty embarrassing, you know, because everybody would put on their shorts, and I knew that we had, uh, um, of course, class with girls and boys. Whenever I had to put on my shorts, you know, it was over. I was made fun all the time. Yeah? Yeah. I think that's why I didn't pick up in high school. You know? Oh, but you do like messing about with the water, don't you? You enjoy your swimming. Oh, I love water sports. I used to, I mean, I had to do a sport where there wasn't a team like football because they laugh at me so I went into windsurfing yeah. it was more individual and I love windsurfing I love, I, that's what I love about Miami too that it's on the ocean and I get to relax there yeah uh, and you have a boat uh, yeah so I have a small a boat fishing yeah I do fishing but not I'm not a good I'm mm. not good at fishing but I love fishing well it is important Enrique to, to recognize different fish so um, we've got a few here you know when you're fishing oh yeah uh, yeah so we've got a little test here I'm going to grill you um, <laughs> Stevie, tell me what these fish are. Is the first one? Oh, uh, that's a... Uh, that's... That's a... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but, this... I never caught one of those. No. It's a herring aid. <laughs> uh, it could have been the Prince of Wales, but we won't go into that. Here we go. There's another one. <laughs> Quite that, easy, this one. That's a birthday fish. No, it's a fish cake. Hey, <laughs> guys. You won't know this one. That, this is the hard by this. I don't know. Who's no. that guy in the front? Well, it's, it's, that is Rick Waller. This is a bloater. <laughs> now, what do you think this one is? Okay. I don't know. I'll let you say it because I know you'll get rattled right applause. Here we go, you ready? I'll just whisper it to you. Shh, shh. Okay, here that, we go. That's a keeper. Uh, sorry? A keeper. No, not a keeper. <laughs> it's a keeper.
a new singer, it's a great singer, I heard it earlier, sensational, out in August. It's called Love to See You Cry. Love to See, which is an unusual title. How did it you is, come it out is. With um, I like coming up with titles first and then uh, I begin to write songs. So this was uh, a title that I liked a lot. And you're going over there now and singing it for us. Yes, sir. So we want to thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, singing Love to See You Cry. Enrique!
When something great happens, you want everyone to see it. That's why there's now a network that lets you be the first to take, send, and receive images mobile to mobile. Life's better with pictures. Get more. T-Mobile. Hungry for a totally over-the-top pizza? Then bite into Bernard Matthews' new turkey ham and cheese pizza. New turkey ham and cheese pizza. Generously topped with tasty turkey ham, cheddar and mozzarella on a delicious crispy base. Nothing tops new pizza for fresh ingredients and great taste. Don't just say ah, say pizza. Fresh from Bernard Matthews. Pizza! Dry, coarse, rebellious hair and the nightmare. New L'Oreal LV Smooth Intense with Neutrillium. Neutrillium contains a unique combination of micro oils to nourish and calm hair, leaving it four times smoother. With Smooth Intense, my hair is smooth for longer, sleek and more manageable for hair that longs to be touched. New L'Oreal LV Smooth Intense. Because you're worth it. I'll see a movie with Marta. No, better dinner with Peter. Or I could rent a video. Feel fresh and comfortable, whatever you choose. Carefree creates new Flexiform for a panty or a tanga. New Carefree Flexiform adapts to your life. And it's Peter! <laughs> Looking for a more enjoyable way to get into shape? Try a fruit smoothie from Shape's new low-fat range. fans say that I'm a great little mover. <laughs> thanks girls and uh, thanks love. Uh, but uh, to be a great dancer you've got to have a great choreographer and I believe in encouraging young talent. So what is good dancing Ellis? Could you do, do, do a little bit for us now? <laughs> What sort of music do you like dancing to? Michael Jackson. Oh, really? <laughs> do you think I'm wearing the right sort of clothes, Billy Joe? No. So should I wear sort of something like tights? Mm, no. Yeah, you're right, I shouldn't. I don't look silly. OK, kids. <laughs> I'm going to finish our river dance. <laughs> I know I should have gone wet, wet, wet. My next guest made Sarah dream with envy. He was the only one Gordon would go for. It's Mr. Philip Schofield! <laughs> Welcome. 
Are you enjoying it? I am enjoying it. Now, you are a bit of a wine connoisseur. <laughs> Nice Bordeaux for Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. Really? Lovely. Tell me the year. Yeah. No, it's young. Is it? 95? No, it's July the 6th. <laughs> <laughs> now, we recently saw you on the National IQ. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's your IQ? Well, um, it's not as big as my wife's. She has an IQ of 131, and mine was 115. Uh. So... Do you think I'd have a high IQ? I think you have a very high IQ. Well, it's funny, I did have the... Uh, yeah. Did you have... I did have an IQ test. <laughs> did you really? But, uh, yeah. Came back negative. <laughs> <laughs> now, you and I have something in common. Do we? I shall give you a clue. Right. Balls. Uh, <laughs> National Lottery. Of course. Everyone stands about sort of two inches taller when they're doing live TV because it's... Uh, it, there is just that pump of adrenaline. I love that. Yeah. Adrenaline's brown. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Why do I, do this? I had a streaker once. On the lot? Yeah, he's a professional streaker. I don't know if you've ever. And he had the. Because our show was called The Balls Decide. <laughs> yeah. He had it written on his bum. You know, like. I thought you were going to say he had it written on his book. No, I was. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but I actually. I get all butch and I actually rugby tackled him and pushed him away because if Dale Winter was there, he would have had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> no! But it was true. It was true. Well, what I want to ask you about uh, the early days, you know, with the, your children's Saturday morning shows and things like that. Um, mm. So, how do you look back on those years? Oh, fondly. It was great. Saturday mornings were, were terrific. I mean, it was three and a half hours of um, controlled chaos. Um, and, and also the, the, the broom cupboard in the afternoons, and you know, not forgetting that as well. That was that, a you were the first one in yeah, the, the broom first, cupboard. first person in well, the... Well, there was basil yeah. brush, and then there was sweep. But, you know, you, <laughs> yeah. you were in that little broom cupboard. <laughs> what a, what a list of people, eh? Basil brush, sweep, and me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you did have a uh, very famous co-presenter on Going Live. Very cuddly, little squeaky boys, a bit hairy. How is Sarah Green? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, when you moved on from that, you... Uh, went into Joseph. Hmm. Was it planned? No, no. No? That was, the, that was the best adventure ever. I mean, that started a whole different life for me, really. It, 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 God bless Andrew Lloyd Webber. I mean, it was, it was in, he had the most bizarre thought when Jason Donovan said he was going to have six weeks off from Joseph, and, uh, and, um, and it was my phone that rang. Uh, and, uh, and Andrew Lloyd Webber said to, to, said to my office, you know, can Philip Schofield sing? And they phoned me up and said, can you sing? And I said, well, I don't know. Why? Because Andrew Lloyd Webber's been on the phone wants you to do Joseph. I said, yeah, you're joking. Phone it back. It's an 0898 Lucky Lips number. You know, is that a given? <laughs> and this, this very... How do you know then? <laughs> you did have another big worry going into the show. You know, this is... Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> you're only yeah. in a little nappy, aren't you? you uh, know, yeah, I know. Well, I, you know, I, I, at the time, I was a bit like Enrique. You know, I was stick man. So, uh, you know, I looked at myself in the mirror and I thought, oh, no, this isn't going to work at all. But you do look very supple. <laughs> you know? I'm thinking there's something that really irritates your children. No, no. Yes, you can. Irritates <laughs> your kids. They I don't, don't like don't this. I don't believe it. So what can you do? But it's just something that my kids don't like, that's all. Mm -hmm. That's why he rolls up his sleeves and oh, here we go, he's going to be trouble. <laughs> what am I doing now? <laughs> right. Leave this. Okay, look what you've done to me. Right, okay, hold on. Hang well, on. Maybe if we get ourselves a bit of room here, <laughs> you know. I've never done this in public before, yeah. I swear. What I were you close on? Okay. Here we go. So what you do oh. is you just this is this is once again. Oh, <laughs> get the pins out of the way. Love you. Over on that, you? So what you do is you're gonna go like this, right? No. Now that in itself is I could okay. not you know, that's well, Let me just show you, you that? how bad I am. Okay. okay. That's it. I can't even. <laughs> I cannot get there. That's okay, but can you do this? No. <laughs> Another great show that you do is One in a Million, which is all about, you know, real life coincidences. Mm. The, the great thing about those stories are the ones we couldn't put on the telly at the time. Really? There was a huge investigation after uh, a, a, an enormous fire, bush fire. And I can't remember where it was, but it was somewhere, I think it was sort of Turkey, somewhere around that area. 
and there was this, this huge fire and this massive clean-up operation. And bearing in mind that this, this particular brush fire, bush fire, was about 30 miles away from, from the sea. And, uh, and as they went in to clear up this operation, they found a uh, scuba diver in the full scuba kit dead in the middle of this brush fire. It's all put out, and he, there he was. The investigation that they did subsequently found out that this bloke had apparently been scuba diving in the sea, 20 miles away, when the helicopter had come over with one of those big buckets, had dipped into the water, scooped up the water to take it and sink, <laughs> and had taken the scuba diver. <laughs> so this bloke... <laughs> the next thing, bang, he's in a tank. <laughs> I don't know whether you can look out over the top of the thing, but this bloke could have been <laughs> looking out over the top, but a wreck Saturday afternoon recreational scuba diving, he's looking out the top. Next thing, they tip him on the fire. <laughs> what a crap day he was having. Uh, we, uh, we all know about your TV work, but what sort of jobs did you do, you know? When you were younger? When you were at school, you, you got your summer holidays, you had to make as much money as you possibly could in your, in your summer holidays, and that would hopefully last you through Christmas and into the year. But these early jobs, you, uh, you, know, you weren't very good with customers in one particular job. Uh, <laughs> people who go on holiday tend to, um, they tend to, I don't know what it is, they sort of leave their manners at home when they, when they go, go on, on holiday. So they wound you up, did they? Yeah, they did. They used to come to the window of the kiosk, and, uh, and I would have got in early in the morning knowing that at some stage during the course of the day I was going to encounter one of these people <clears throat> so I get uh, a can of, uh, of, of, of soft drink and I used to uh, I used to bang it on the on the floor of this kiosk and then you put it underneath and you leave it there it'll last all day no problem it won't you know it's explosive right from the first three bangs but you do it, you do it, you do it. and then you'd wait and gradually this bloke would walk up and you know so I want uh, two corners in a tub and a, and a can for the kid Right, okay, that's it. Marvellous. Here we go. <laughs> this is the one. You're getting the can. And you'd wait, and you'd wait, and you'd wait, and you'd wait, and then poof! Up the and it would go about 30 feet. You'd empty the entire, there's nothing left in the can. And it would go straight up like they'd struck oil. So as you've probably ruined many customers' holidays, <laughs> I think it's only fair that the public get a chance to even the score. So come with me as we play Russian Roulette! <laughs> <laughs> no! Yes, I'm going to Now, yes, come on, Verena. Okay. So, here we are, stand yourself there. This is it. Oh, Steve! And as Phil, uh, obviously a bit of a game show expert, we'd like you to read the actual game out, explain it to the British public at home. <laughs> okay. So, it, uh, it's a good job I've got the contact lenses in. For this game, uh, we've gone a bit upmarket. We're not using a cola cans, we're in fact using champagne. Uh, this uh, oversized gum barrel, oh no, sorry, this <laughs> oversized gum Come barrel on, <laughs> contains six bottles of champagne. Five are filled with water and one of them is filled with champagne. Steve will spin the barrel and then Mr. Brian Connolly yes, and you. myself will take it in turns to face a shaken bottle chosen randomly by Steve. <laughs> This is going to, uh, to get a face full. Steve, will you please spin the barrel? Yeah. I can't lose, really. <coughs> okay. There you go. Now, Phil, as I'm a gentleman, I'd let you go first. So, <laughs> there, there. Okay. Oh you, you can strap yourself in if you want. There you go, mate. In case you do a runner. Okay. Right, it could be TV presenter killed in freak champagne act. <laughs> Go on, Stevie. This one contains water or champagne. Oh. Yeah. Right. Oh, no, I can't do my thingy. Right then, Steve. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Okay, That's right. No, you're yeah. very kind, thank uh, you. Yeah. I'm so glad I came. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I've just made. <laughs> I know it's a bit of a wet patch here. Yeah. <laughs> 
I know, this is it. I know, I'm going to get it. I just got it in my water. I know. Go on, Steve. later time of 5 past 10 but stay with us this Saturday night two films on the way after the latest news which is next another Kellogg's Crunchy Nut. Well, it is ludicrously tasty. It's the home base 50 million pound sale. Keep cool. This stylish chrome fan is down to half price. Only 19.99. But, 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 but don't miss it. Sale ideas. Home base. The savings like the Chertsey sofa half price are just £599. Don't miss the summer sale at Conroy's. It's hot. It's seriously hot. The price of this superb four-draw majestic king size has been cut again. Just one of the many amazing furniture double discounts in the court sale. HP loves beans on toast. Roll your sleeve up. Won't take a second. He was a pillar of the community. She's died on me. But became one of the most prolific serial killers in British history. Could be dozens. Going back years. James Bolan. I'm not guilty. And James Hazeldean in an ITV1 drama premiere. I'm a good GP. A caring GP. Shipman. Tuesday at 9.